Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm sitting in for Alderman Fleming this evening, and we're being asked to do a consent agenda on the Administration Public Works agenda. Um, however, since Alderman Fleming is the regular chair, I'm going to not do that tonight because we have several questions already that we're going to be taking off. So we're just going to move forward with this as we usually do. And um, so, um, are you ready? Do, do, do the bills list? Okay. Right. Do the minutes first. What? Minutes first. Yeah, yeah, we go. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody's ready. Sure. Um, okay, so. Um, Getting started, we'll start with you, Alderman Braithwaite. Could you do the payroll and the bills list and the minutes, please? Sure. Minutes, payroll, and oh, bills. Okay. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval of minutes of the regular meeting for May 29th, 2018. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, I'd also like to move uh, item A1, payroll, May uh, 28th through June 10th, 2018, in the dollar amount of $2,914,751.37. I'd also like to move item A2. Up, up, oh, up. I'm sorry, go ahead. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, bills? Second. Good. All right. All right. Bills list. Madam Chair, I'd also like to move item A2, bills list, uh, through June 26, 2018, in the dollar amount of $3,366,487.59. It's for action. Second. Um, I do have some questions on bills list. Mm -hmm. um, and they can't be resolved here, but this issue I asked about um, I didn't ask a question about the ward postcards for the ward meeting. I asked a question when it said that there was um, a postcard that went out to new residents. I asked, could I see a, an example of that postcard? And I was referred to some website. I could have looked that up myself. I didn't have time. Um, so I'd like to see a copy of that. And second of all, the convoluted way that we determine who gets one of those new residents, I have absolutely no clue. Um, it seems that we have to have sent them a postcard for a ward meeting or something, and then we find out that, I don't know, now there's a new person living in that house. So that is n not a good idea, I don't think. Madam Chair, members of the committee, I can answer <sighs> that question. Just so there are two separate charges. One is for the ward meeting postcard. The other is for the new resident. We've been, we've been sending out the new resident postcard for three or four years now. The list of addresses that we receive is procured from the post office by the vendor. And the addresses on it include anybody that's moved from outside of a 60201 or a 60202 area code into that area code. So if your area code was anything other than an Evanston area code and you are moving into an Evanston area code via post office mail delivery system, then you be on the list. And then you get the new postcard, and then when we when the time period passes, three months, six months, it's usually we try to send these quarterly, then we procure a new list based on the date of the last mailing. It has nothing to do with our ever sending them a postcard to that address previously? Correct. Um, okay. Is there any way we can get a, a list of those people so that we know who's new? Sure. I can send you the list. And, and I'd like to see the postcard. There, is it the same postcard for everybody? It is the same postcard, and we'll get you a copy of it yeah. and email it to you along with a list of the addresses. Great. And what's the <laughs> frequency of this? Is this going to be like on a monthly basis, quarterly. moving on a quarterly basis, moving forward? We aim for quarterly, but sometimes it can be four, four months, five months, just when, whenever it comes up on the yeah. schedule. No, and that's fine. Just huh. seems so simple. Okay. Alrighty. Anybody else have any questions? I think I had several mm -hmm. others, but I'm going to let it go. Um, oh, I the solid waste. 
I asked, what, what is the study, the solid waste study, examining, and what are we looking for? The study was on the solid waste contract with Groot for eight thousand eight hundred dollars. This this looks like a very involved study of all waste, and I, I I'd like to know more about Miss it. That. Maybe Ms. Biggs not, can maybe answer that question. Not necessarily. Hello, uh, members of APW. My name is Laura Biggs. I'm the uh, acting public works director tonight. So the solid waste contract with um, our provider actually has this study as part of it, but it's a separate line item, so that's why it was billed separately. And what it involves is they actually look at our waste stream over a short period of time that is collected and goes to Swank, and at Swank they sort it into different types of waste to determine if what's in the waste stream is appropriate. So for example, if they sort it and they find a lot of electronics are being disposed of when they're supposed to be pulled out and recycled, that's a piece of information that the city of Evanston can use to direct our public education efforts and try to improve the way that we manage our solid waste. So um, there's this initial study, and then I believe quarterly there will be just sort of a visual recount, not a detailed sorting that happens at Swank. The process was overseen by our um, sustainability manager. But the only thing they're looking at is what the average person calls garbage. They're not going to be looking at our recycling. They're not going to be looking at our leaves. That's, that's that is it. true. Okay. They actually just went and looked. Um, purely at what's removed as garbage and will be eventually landfilled. And, okay, and so the purpose is, the end purpose is to be able to provide education to people regarding what they're putting in that can. Yes. What they shouldn't be putting in the can. What they should not be putting in that can. All right, good. All right, thank you very much. All right, and when are we going to get the report? I am not certain of that. I will have to check and get back to you on yeah. that. Because it was supposed to be started within the year or something, like right about now. Yes. And I, and I just don't know, but I will find out. Right. That would be interesting to hear. All right. Okay. So um, thank you very much. All right. So um, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the bills, $3,366,487.59. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm. Right. Next, um, I'll read that one. Is uh, one year contract renewal with Sam Goss and Associates for handyman services in the this is the uh, final year of a three year agreement, uh, not to exceed thirty five thousand dollars for labor and materials. All those in oh second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Alderman Simmons. A4, staff recommends city council authorize the city manager to execute a contract for the survey benchmark update with American Surveying and Engineering PC in the amount of $49,447.42. This will verify the accuracy of the existing 18 survey monuments and to install an additional 20 monuments around the city. The monuments are utilized by contractors, development, developers, engineers, and city staff to design and construct projects ranging from roadway improvements to commercial development. Funding for this project will be provided from uh, Capital Improvement Program 2018 General Obligation Bonds, which has a budget allocation of $50,000, all of which is remaining is for action. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Alderman Suffordin? Item A5 is a contract with construction consulting and disbursement services for the water treatment plant door renovations in the amount of $80,500 for action. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Alderman Braithwaite? Would item A6? Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move item A6. It's a sole source contract with uh, L-class lighting to repair the city of Evanston street fixtures and units. Uh, it's in the dollar amount of 
473, and the funding uh, is coming from the lighting account. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Alrighty, moving right along. Next, A7, a contract with Garland DBS, Inc., for the fire station number two roof replacement um, in the amount of $234,057. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All the minutes and minutes. Oh. A8, staff recommends city council authorize the city manager to execute a contract for Mason Park Fieldhouse roof and exterior improvements with Garland DBS Incorporated in the amount of $109,996. Garland DBS Inc. was selected contractor for roofing and masonry work through U.S. Communities Cooperative Purchasing Program. Funding will be provided from Community Development Block Grant Funds. The project was budgeted at 110000 in fiscal year 2018. It's for action. Second. Any discussion? I think it's amazing that a group can come this far. Hearing none. All those in favor? Are you? No, no, I was just making They're, they're using a local contractor. Yeah. Oh, other are. displays. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any, aye. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Alderman Suffragan. Sure. Uh, item A9 is a contract with Mag Construction Company for the South Stand Pipe Pump Station, Motor Control Center, and Building Renovation. It's in the amount of $377,000. Uh, funding will be provided from the Water Fund, uh, which has a FI 2018 budget of $325,000. Funding for the difference between the budget and the bid cost is available in the Water Fund from delays on other projects, specifically the Clearwell 9 replacement project. And this is for action. Second. All right. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. You. Moving right along. Oh, yes. Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. Do, do we have anybody signed up for public comment on this? Yes, we do. We do. Yes. Um, a9. Uh, Janad Rizki. Sorry about that. Would you like me to address all four items on here now that I'm at the podium, or want me to go come up for each one? If you trust, we'll remember, yes, go right ahead. All right, discuss them all, that's fine. Um, the first thing I have about A9, the South Standpipe, that's concerned to me, is you're taking money from the Clearwell project, which hasn't even started yet. And um, so is that's really like a, a pork fund. I can use that because it hasn't started. And that's not acceptable, really, because sh that money should be held and not used. This money should be for this and not that. And I think that's a problem. That's a budgetary issue. And really, how you're basically, as, you know, like the transfer station fees, it's the same thing. You're taking money you really don't have. Um, and then on the termination of A18, I'm going to just say. Um, Wait. Um. Uh, I'm going to. Is it A18 or I'm sorry, 15? A15, I'm sorry, A15. I'm, um, on Oakton, the only thing I have to really say about that is um, it appears to me the city knew about these problems months before it had told the council. And the troubling thing here to me is the loss of the $50,000 because of staff not doing anything. And this has to be recovered. Um, I feel that we need to, to basically get our money back because we are so have so many issues with money. We shouldn't be moving on to do anything else until we settle this on that item. And then um, on Howard Street, uh, here again, we're, we're money. There's that's a 17. Um, it sounds like we're adding more money to a contract, yet we're not getting compensated for it. We're not getting more money in return. So uh, that's A17 on Howard Street, uh, 727. We should be demanding that we get an increase in the contract and basically the, the lease price on that if we're going to add more money to it. And the last item that I will mention is APW1, fire services. Um, this is part a thing that has me concerned, and I'll address it more at council. But at the 7th and 6th Ward meeting, the city manager made a comment that the firefighters' pension costs 
were higher than their salaries on a daily basis. And I got up and told them that that isn't true. I'm very concerned about how certain rumors have been spread about some of these different um, the part, things in the budget. And I have issues on some other things I'll address at council. But we need to be factual when we state things about cutting things. And uh, I corrected him at the time. Thank you. Are, are you going to clarify that later? Well, would you? What would you? I mean, does it pertain to our, our agenda item? Um, the well, the fire department service one. That's an item on here, correct? Yeah. And basically, I just said I feel that on these items that we're trying to look at cutting, we need to be very clear that we state factual information. Thank you. So, uh, wanted to go through all of them. We'll get back to um, the agenda. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to item A twelve. Yep. Items for consideration, which is section four, resolution thirty nine R eighteen. That's you, Alderman Berkeley. Uh, sure, Madam Chair. I'd like to move item A twelve, uh, resolution thirty nine dash R dash eighteen. Uh, local agency agreement with the Illinois Department of Transportation for Central Street Bridge, phase uh, phase two engineering, uh, and that's in the dollar amount of uh, five hundred and nineteen dollars five hundred and twelve, of which the four hundred and fifteen and sixty four will be funded through a federal grant from the Surface Transportation Program, and the other uh, twenty percent comes from our, our, our CIP budget. Second. All right, any discussion? Anybody want to talk about that? All right, hearing none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, resolution 40 R18. Um, we're being asked to request council adopt this resolution, which authorizes the manager to sign a preliminary engineering services agreement for federal participation with the Illinois Department of Transportation and a professional service agreement with Stanley Consultants for the Central Street Bridge Phase Two Engineering. Um, the total cost of Phase Two Engineering Services with Stanley um, is 519,512, as we just heard. Um, the federal grant will reimburse the city 80%, um, or 415,674, and the remaining 20%, or 103,918, will be from the Capital Improvements Fund. Uh, this is for action. I move uh, recommendation for approval. Second. All right. And any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Um, A14, Alderman Simmons. Evanston Police Department staff recommend City Council adopt Resolution 44R18, authorizing the City Manager to approve and amend mutual aid agreement for the Northern Illinois Police Alarm System. NIPAS is a mutual aid group that provides the Evanston Police Department with emergency services, uh, mobile field force capability, and large contingent of bicycle officers trained for crowd control. It's for action. Second. Any discussion? Hearing any, I guess hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Wait, 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 wait. I only heard two eyes, and we have four of us here. So, All right. Alderman Simmons just moved approval of Resolution 44R18. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. All right. Next, Alderman Suffered. Sure. Uh, item A15 is uh, Resolution 27R18, the termination of the lease at 2222 Oakton and issuance of a request for qualifications, proposals for reuse. Uh, this is for action. Okay. Second. Second. All right, this, this has a couple of pieces to it. Um, we're also being asked to hold um, the lease termination in, in this, I don't know why it's not more clear, but we are. Um, I know Alderman Fleming has sent uh, some comments regarding this. You want to read those, Ms. Storley? 
Sure. Alderman Fleming could not be here tonight, and she prepared the statement, which I'm going to read for her. I do not agree with the proposed RFP timeline provided in tonight's packet. This nine to 10 month process not only prolongs our ability to liquidate the building and use the funds for things like designated capital improvements, debt repayment, or pension payments. I do not support the city going into another lease agreement given the ineffective execution of the current lease and the previous lease with the art center. In addition, acting as a lessor would likely require the city to invest money into the building to repair the parking lot as was laid out in the current lease. This is money we simply do not have. I regret not being present to voice my strong support for, for the sale of this building. All right, well, I, I, for one, would like to address those comments. First of all, a, a lease with one person has absolutely nothing to do with a lease with another person. And, you know, if you were going to use um, a lease with somebody like Smiley Brothers, who is a very substantial user in our community and a contributor, um, you know, you would certainly consider them a viable tenant. So, and and the art center was in the Harley Clark Mansion for years. So that argument is is rather illogical, quite frankly. So, I I would argue that we leave this open if we are going to go with an RFP. One of the problems with putting this up for sale right off the bat is the fact we lose control right up front. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do a lease to own. If we lose control of this property to somebody we really don't know, they could go into business. And this this property is sitting right, right on adjacent to one of our parks, our biggest park in the city. And that, that property could uh, be sold quickly, even in, let's say, five years, to an entity that we have no control over they're selling it to. And as long as, you know, as, as we, we would have no control over it. And we might not really approve of the buyer. The, the buyer at the outset could default on the mortgage and it could go into foreclosure. All sorts of things could happen. I would rather see us watch how responsible the, the user is for a couple of years, like a five-year lease to own. Um, and that, that's what I would do. I, I just think this knee-jerk reaction of let's unload all our property so that we can, you know, get the money and spend it on other needs is, is not the most responsible reaction at this point. Also, this building is like a bomb shelter. It's not costing us anything really to maintain other than to make sure the water pipes don't freeze. It's not, you know, it's not leaking. It's, it, it just sits there. So it's not like a, a so-called landmark or a decorative property. It's, it's not something that we have to tinker with constantly. It's a, a brick box. And so it's, it's not, and, and right now, while we're not in it, we have, we're using it. We're, we're probably saving money by stuffing it full of all of our stuff for storage, as we did before we planned to lease it to Smiley Brothers. So it, it, ha it has a use. All right, so um, I believe Alderman Simmons and then Alderman Braithwaite, and that's it. Um, thank you, Alderman Rainey. I, I agree um, not to look to sell it, but to hold it, uh, mostly because of proximity to um, our parks and the school, and just to take some time to be more um, thoughtful about its next use. So I would not support um, further discussion about selling it right away. Alderman uh, Braithwaite? Um, yeah, I thought you brought up a very good point uh, with the idea of leasing and I just wanted to ask two questions either to you I know this is in your order to our staff 
Uh, two things. First, I can't recall if part of Smiley Brothers' lease agreement was to pay taxes, because oh, I think, yes. okay, oh, oh, big time. so yeah. check that box. Yeah. Thank you. And then number two. That they do owe us taxes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that so that would be part of the lease agreement, which is which is a good thing. And then the second thing, uh, Alderman Rainey, for that use to change, we would still have to vote on it. So we would still have the control. Well, the zoning would control. The zoning would control. The zoning that would, would be the only the use. that would be we wouldn't have control. The zoning. The zoning would. would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Alderman Suffer. Sure. Um, Ms. Leonard, is it? Could you clarify the tax question, please? Sure. Good evening. Johanna Leonard, Community Development Director. Uh, the lease uh, endeavored for us to put the property back on the tax rolls. It's currently not, it's currently exempt mm -hmm. because it's a city property. Um, we can go to the county once a year. Uh, it's in about October. There's a date on the assessor's website where we can add the property back on. We would, we, but we, were, we did not do that because um, Smiley Brothers never finalized their site plan. And if you recall from when we did this when we went through this process originally, there was uh, there, the property is currently divided, but it wasn't divided in a way that was going to work for Smiley and for our. We were going to do a parking lot next to it, so um, they needed to finalize their site plan. We would then finalize our parking lot plans and then return for a subdivision of those properties. So, so we only have a small window. Um, they ex their extension period, inspection period, uh, went until last July, and from that point, we were on a pretty aggressive timeline to get the property subdivided, surveyed, subdivided, and to the county um, by October. So uh, that did not happen. But that also meant they wouldn't have started building, so there wouldn't have been much to assess for taxes at that point either. So it was we had planned uh, that that would be an activity for this year versus last year. So our projections had been that there would be taxes generated there and that they would have paid them, but the, the property was not added back to the tax rolls because we had not finalized the actual site that would have been taxable. Would you say we blew it? More or less? I don't think we blew it. Uh, we just, our timeline got compressed because we didn't have the time uh, because of that one window opening with the county. So we just didn't, their their timeline was compressed, ours was compressed. We would have had to come back to council. Um, that would have occurred somewhere probably August, September had they met their, their milestones for completing their project and site plan. So have we met with, with them? What, what's the status of our discussions with them? So we, we had a meeting with them late on Friday. Um, we presented all the pieces of, of the lease and our position uh, that we have an enforceable lease. And uh, they presented their position. And uh, we're going to regroup, hopefully this week, on, on finalizing some of the pieces of that. But um, there was a, a personal matter in the Smiley's family, uh, and uh, they're back in Chicago now ready to address this. Is Can you tell us what their position is? Well, I think our position, I can tell you, our position is we have a lease, and their position is that they want to be let out of it. So we're, we're working towards resolving this um, in a way that can help everyone move on. Do we anticipate a check July 1? I don't know if I am in a position to say that. I mean, uh, I mean under the ter under the terms of the lease. Under the terms of the lease, yes. Okay, I guess that. Alderman Saffron and Munches. Well, under under the terms of the lease, we are due a monthly payment on July 1, 2018. Um, and then, can I ask about the process going forward? Is there any reason why we can't uh, ask everyone for their best offers, lease or purchase? Well, that, that's a good question. I, I, I would seek the direction from the council this, and this commi committee to determine if we want to just ask for proposals or if we want to go through the qualifications. You tell us you're a qualified operator, and then you can submit a proposal. The, that's the way this is currently set up, that you show us that you're a qualified operator of something that fits within the goals of this property, uh, and then we ask for a proposal after that. Or we just ask for people to – we can – position the, the document to say, give us your best plan, offer, show us that you're a credible operator and how you want to use it. I think we were trying to get to more of an apples to apples to figure out if we had good users and then get a proposal instead of getting a really great proposal, but then finding out that that person could necessarily operate the business. Because yeah. um, I, I, mean, I understand my colleagues' concerns about per selling it rather than leasing it. 
But I also think we, we probably should just take a look at everything that comes in and and then we can have an open discussion about what the best uh, offer is. And well, then, if you don't set some guidelines or standards, for example, you have to pay taxes. You, you, got, you can't be tax exempt. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, so you got to have those guidelines, standards, rules of the game, so to speak. Well, I think as it, it's written right now, it says the city is seeking a taxable user. So if that is something that we shouldn't include in the document, let me know, and we can say any user. Why? Uh, how about, um, given given what you've heard today, could you put something together that is a little looser than taking, like, I, I, I do agree with Alderman Simmons that 10 to 11 months, I mean, we have certain requirements for public property. I mean, we have to advertise it. We, we know that. Um, there's not much we can do about that. But we we could zero in on this a little more. Well, if, if you'd like us to just take both qualifications and proposal and s put them together into one, ask them to respond to all the qualifications questions and put stipulations on what we'd like to see in a proposal, we can do that for this first round. And then that would, would, would that take... Be, would that. that be good? Mm -hmm. I, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We would like to see. And then the question of a taxable user, do you want it to say taxable user or do you want to see all kinds of users and we, how many taxes see, they might generate? Want, I think we're all in agreement. We want someone who is not a property tax exempt user. There you go. That's yeah. noted. There's, there's all kinds of taxable users, but not non property tax. Got it. All right. Well, this will if we if we put the two pieces together, that will uh, take off probably sixty to ninety days easily. And we're not talking about people who want to pay in lieu of, for example, you know, I mean, churches. Okay. Yes, Alderman Simmons. So I was actually just going to ask that um, fee in lieu of taxes. No, no. We're, real, we're talking about property tax, because that, that gets you into all sorts of issues. Like what? Just for example. Oh, well, like for example, you can get into a situation with, um, well, it's a long list. It's a long list. Yeah. Definitely a long list. Here today. Um, so, anyway, all right. So, um, in terms of our recommendation, um, I think our staff understood that, and so we can move on. So, could Alderman Simmons, would you like to make a motion that we authorize um, our staff to combine sure. the qualifications and the um, let's see, and the proposal? Um, I move that we combine the. Uh, request including the qualifications and the request for a proposal for lease property 2222 Oakton. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'll second. All right. Seconded by Alderman Braithwaite. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And then. Um, you know, we, we concur that you're going to bring back Smiley Brothers at our next meeting. Are you thinking our next meeting? Yes, I'm th I am anticipating that on July 9th, uh, the Law Department will bring a, a, a settlement agreement for uh, the release of Smiley Brothers from their lease. So we're not really going to do anything with this proposal qualifications matter until, I mean, uh, I will produce anything. Right. I will, we may bring a resolution back just to officially authorize the city manager, but that does not stop us from pulling, putting these documents um, together. We can be working. Right. Yeah. But, um, do we, um, do we have to wait until that negotiation is concluded before we can start entertaining? Uh, I think we're going to have this completed in, in the first meeting in July. Oh, okay. It's, it's going to be real quick. All right, we're moving on here. All right, um, who did that? Um, Alderman Suffolk did that. Mm -hmm. Alderman Braithwaite, A16. 
Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move, uh, excuse me, move resolution 29-R-18, authorizing the city manager to enter into a six-month lease agreement with Studio 2022, 20, excuse me, 220 at Noise Cultural Arts Center. It's for action. Second. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the lease agreement say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, next is A17. Uh, we're being asked. Johanna. To, being asked to recommend adoption of this resolution, which authorizes the manager to amend the five year lease agreement with Hip Circle Empowerment. Center located at the city owned property at 727 Howard Street uh, to account for additional expense related to construction of tenant improval, uh, improvement. I move approval. Second. Um, second, okay. Um, I think uh, Paul Zelmazak is here to maybe address some of the issues. Alderman Sufferton. I was just going to ask Paul if he could come up and address some yeah. of the issues. You need to do so that. that worked out? Paul, can you address some of the issues? Please. Sure. Let's address some of the issues. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, thank you. Um, Alderman suffered in what specific issues? Did you just want to generally know yeah, why? Just tell me how we got from 25 to 40 and what? Sure. Um, the, so let me see if I can simplify this. Um, specifically for, from the city's vanilla box perspective, the cost of, uh, there was an uh, electrical box relocation and some ADA work required on the bathroom build out. That um, came about after the the, spa the plans were uh, reviewed by our plan inspectors. Um, that didn't happen before. Uh, that that was following the, kind of the natural progress of how a project is reviewed. Um, and secondly, um, there's um, a, a new um, contractor on the case who's kind of reviewed the entire uh, build out requirement and it's actually a little bit more money overall. So um, actually the tenant is paying probably twice as much as she anticipated paying as well. Is that true? No. 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 Yeah. Right, so the project is some, somewhere in the range of $76,000 in total. Uh, okay, so yeah. due to this we're ch changing the original, the first Rent payment or walk right. through so, how we're addressing it. Okay, so l let me take one step back. If we had put that uh, facility in, in vanilla box at some point in the past before Hip Circle had come around, we'd be spending this money anyway. This building has been sitting kind of in this um, vacant state for longer than I've been here. I've been here for seven years. We bought that. Um, that was probably one of the first ones we bought, and it okay. was probably in the worst condition. Right. So, we so paid the lease for it, I think. Okay, and it's in it's in pretty raw shape. And to, to bring it to modern standards, we would have had to spend this money anyway. Um, we couldn't as staff. We we attempted to schedule our staff to do the work. Just didn't fit in the summer. Uh, there were other projects that they were working on. Okay. So, um, so how could we have done this better? Or we wouldn't have known about these increased costs. Before no, I, you know, no, yeah. because. <laughs> The trouble is we have this legislative process, so in order to move forward with this project, Hip Circle needed to come to the city council to get approval uh, to lease the space, but they couldn't, didn't want to spend the money to do the plans for the space until after they knew they had the lease. So there's a, a chicken and egg thing. Uh, the $15,000 difference is not insignificant, but overall in a larger project, that's, that's not unheard of. But had we, if we didn't have to have the legislative process involved, then we we w would have known that up front. Okay. So we're paying an extra $15,350, and Malik, you're paying, what's this costing you? Sorry, when, sorry. When, when, do you, when do you step forward? The, the project went from somewhere in the range of 50 to 75, but. Uh, my name is Malik Turley, and I'm the executive director of Hip Circle Empowerment Center. Our costs, um, we are doing some of the work ourselves because we can't afford all of the increase in costs. So the um, additional that we are spending above the loan that we have is another 11000 and then we are working to offset the rest of the increase. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. I appreciate both of you uh, answering those questions. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I, 
Any other questions? No. 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 All right. All right. So we have a motion and a second and some questions answered. Okay. All those in favor of recommending uh, the increase to the city council say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Moving on. Next. Let's see where. Next. I'm not sure. We're, we're at uh, 67018. Staff recommends City Council adopt Ordinance 67018 to allow the city to invest money using services of 53 Securities Incorporated, PFM Investment Services, and Wind Trust Community Bank. This is for introduction. Is there any reason, Madam Chair, that we have to do this in two readings? Um, that I'm not sure of. Um, is anyone here is from there any reason there's I'm Hitesh? Not. I mean, I, I don't know if there's some state statue or something that only knows I, no okay can we we'll can we? move uh, um alderman simmons Thanks. can you move to suspend the rules and take action sure i'm gonna move to suspend the rules of or for um ordinance 667018 in um for action tonight for action is there a second second all right all those in favor of moving introduction, uh, suspension, and action on A18, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All righty. Um, okay, now Alderman Sufferden, 72018. Uh, item 19 is Ordinance 72018, increasing the on-site beer sample size, uh, sale size limit from 24 to 32 ounces for the Class K license class. This is for introduction. Second. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> I didn't know what my mic was off. Sorry. <laughs> All right. There was a second. Um, all right. All those in favor of, uh, is there a suggestion that we uh, suspend the rules, Alderman Braithwaite? I would, I would make that motion. <laughs> Why not? Uh, how do you feel about that, Alderman Sufferman? I'm all right with that. Okay. All right. So could you make that motion? Uh, sure. Uh, I move that we suspend the rules and make this for introduction and action. All right. Second. All right. Okay. So there's a motion to uh, move introduction, suspension, and action on A19. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I'll move very quick. Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to move item uh, A10, Ordinance 73-0-18, amending the Sunday service hours to begin from 10 a.m. Uh, for the restaurant liquor license. Can we do the same thing here? Second. Well, I support you, that. You have to do it. Yeah, it makes do sense. It. Let's do it. You do it. Oh, you have I, okay, I would like to move for introduction and action. Okay. You have to folks. suspend the rules. And suspend the rules. Second. Actually, I'd like to make it ADF. Introduction, action, and suspension of the rules on Ordinance 73018. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, Ordinance 74018 is decreasing the number of Class C liquor licenses for uh, Class C liquor license for Cheesy's Pub and Grub. LLC located at 622 Davis. This decreases the number of uh, C licenses from 25 to 24 due to the closure of Cheesy's Pub. Um, uh, staff is asking that we move introduction, suspend the rules, and take action this evening. I therefore move that. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, that concludes our agenda. Uh, we have a discussion item. Um, the fire chief is here, and the next item is fire department services evaluation. Welcome. Good evening. Madam Chair, members of the committee. Good evening. Good evening, Fire Chief Brian Scott. 
I've been asked to present to you this evening a, a, uh, for your consideration a brief overview of the fire department staffing and service delivery, along with some budgetary considerations for the department relative to the fiscal year 2019. The Evanston Fire Department is an all-hazards department comprised of 107 sworn members that are currently responding to over 10,000 calls a year annually. These calls are comprised of fires, medical emergencies, as well as highly specialized technical rescue, which includes hazardous materials, building collapse, high-angle rope rescue, and water rescues. We also perform over 1,000 life safety building inspections, as well as plan reviews. As you know, the job of firefighter paramedic is very labor intensive and time critical. Something that some of you on the committee as well as the council of the whole had the chance to experience when you went to Fire Ops 101 last September. Our current staffing model keeps that in mind as we operate with a daily staffing minimum of 26 personnel per 24 hour shift, which is designed to keep all of our frontline apparatus, which is comprised of five engines, two trucks, two ambulances, and a shift commander staffed across the five fire stations, which are strategically placed throughout the city to maximize our operational coverage and minimize our response time. If you look to the right to the slide, you'll see a GIS response time analysis map that shows our current staffing model, which allows for effective fire, EMS, and rescue coverage in virtually every area of the city in about three minutes or less. You've heard me say many times that Responding quickly helps save lives, it helps reduce injuries, and minimize property damage. And in fact, it's probably the biggest reason why we're able to save over 98% of property that's impacted by fire. It's also very important with respect to emergency medical services. In fact, our resource deployment model is very unique because not only are our ambulances equipped with advanced life support equipment and paramedics, but so is every single frontline piece of fire apparatus which allows us quick response times with the properly trained and equipped people to handle the most acute medical emergencies and traumatic injuries. I think it's particularly important, and you've heard me say this before, with cardiac care. The American Heart Association tells us that it's critically important to get to people in cardiac arrest within the, few, the first few minutes of an arrest, and we're able to do that. Every minute of the delay impacts that survivability by 10%. Another important consideration with the service delivery model is the fact that at a minimum, 40% of our calls for service happen simultaneously throughout the city, and in some months, it's over 70%. So there's a lot of inherent mutual support and reliance with the overall responding emergency response force that allows companies from other areas to take over calls of service if a particular engine or station is on a run. The, sta the staffing model you see before you has been in effect in a place effectively over the last 35 years, and during that time, our calls for service have increased by 71%. Now, the department has always successfully met that challenge of increased service demand, and we will continue to do so as we expect our annual calls for service to increase by 2% a year going forward. Chief, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Um, your 71% is an increase in calls? Yes, ma'am. In how many years? over the last 35 years. Um, how much has our um, population gone up in those years? That I'd have to look into, but it certainly wouldn't be 71%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's 71% at a 2% increase, right? That's what you said. No, but nope. the, point is, the point is, in 35 years, calls have gone up 71%. Where did the 2% come in? you projecting it? So that 35-year trend, Alderman Braithwaite, is that we anticipate that trend to continue over time, so we'd okay. expect a 2% increase per year going forward as well. Okay. But the point is, oh, I, no, I, I'd, yeah. I'd be curious to know, 35 years ago, what, and we can find that out easily, what was the, um, what was Comparison. the population? It might have yeah. been higher, actually. I mean, I, I know, I don't know. I'm not sure the population numbers back at that time. I can offer you that the main driver for the increase is EMS. So during that same period of time, we've seen an increase of about 85% of our EMS calls with about a 52% increase in our fire calls during that time. Well, we hear people come to the microphone all the time and say, I've lived here for 45 years. <laughs> we've all gotten older. <laughs> all right, sorry. But I, I'd, like, I'd love to know that. 
Now, in evaluating this response model, I, I looked at two objective sources. The first is National Fire Protection Association Standard 1710. Now, 1710 is the current accepted national standard for minimum staffing response time requirements relative to the organization and deployment of a career fire department like Evanston. Now, the purpose of this standard is to scientific research and analysis offer the necessary, the necessary criteria for us to evaluate the efficiency and effectiveness of our department in protecting the citizens of Evanston, as well as protecting the occupational safety and health of the firefighters and paramedics. Now, relative to this standard, you'll see that our response time of three minutes and 15 seconds meets the four minute standard for both fire and EMS. Also, with respect to what we call low hazard occupancies, single family homes less than 2,000 square feet, we also meet that standard with our daily staffing of 26. There are some areas where we don't meet the standard, however. Those would include our company level staffing, which is currently at three, but the standard would require four for engine and truck companies, as well as initial alarm deployment for medium and high hazard occupancies. Examples of a medium hazard occupancy would be a commercial occupancy, such as a store or business, or an apartment building. High hazards are high rise buildings in which the standard requires over 43 firefighters to respond on the initial alarm. A second evaluation can be made through comparisons with similar departments in similar communities. You'll notice here that Evanston's daily staffing per 1,000 people in population is 0.35, which puts us right within the average of 0.36. And again, as a testament to our deployment and staffing model, you'll see that despite the fact that we have similar staffing, our response times in comparison to these communities is 30% faster. I should also mention that engine and truck companies within these communities are all staffed with three members each. Now relative to the 2019 budget, I have three general areas that you could consider for budgetary savings along with some brief comments on the potential impact. The first could, would be to consider elimination of one or more of our community outreach and engagement programs. These would include the Citizens Fire Academy, the Fire Explorer Program, our public CPR classes, the Evanston Township Public Safety Program, or our Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT. Now these programs are very effective, very successful. They um, impact about 400 people in the community every year as they advance our commitment towards public education, diversity, community preparedness, and public safety. A second option you consider would be to continue holding some full-time vacancies that we have in the department. So as part of the 2018 budget, we've held four full-time vacancies, and we can continue those into 2019. A positive piece of that particular option would be is that it maintains our daily staffing minimums. But on the negative side, our overtime increases as a result of the additional vacancies. Lastly, we can look at trying to reduce our overtime by lowering the daily staffing minimum from 26 firefighters. This would result in the closing of a frontline company for the majority of the year. And of course, given that, it would result in a reduction in the daily firefighting and overall emergency response force and increase our emergency response times. In closing, let me express that I fully appreciate that this committee and the council as a whole will be tasked with making some very tough decisions in the weeks and months ahead relative to city services in the 2019 budget. Given that the fire department is a critical and primary, primary service to the community, I am committed to ensure that your decisions relative to public safety are gonna be the most informed as possible. This concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Chief Scott, Alderman Braithwaite has a question, and uh, then Alderman Simmons. Uh, thank you, Alderman Rady. And, Alderman and Chief, I, two quick comments. Uh, the first, comment regarding the community outreach and engagement. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate the most about your leadership is our previous conversations and your commitment to continue in the footsteps of uh, you know, our former fire chief, Greg Kleiberg. And I do feel that that is a very important uh, program as well. I feel strongly that our police and fire departments should mirror and match the demographics of our community. And I think that we could, you know, continue to do better in that area. 
with that being said, I'm curious to know what is the cost associated with that community and outreach engagement program? And then well, if you have a quick response to that. Now. Uh, put all together, the budget team has told me that the, the cost of these programs is about 30 or $73,000. Okay. So roughly, give or take the cost of one employee, roughly. Um, and then I, I think it was part of last year's budget discussion or when you gave the full report, you talked about holding those full-time positions and utilizing more staff overtime and that that was one of your your strategies coming into the budget season and, and it is something that from what you shared your staff was in favor of that correct that is correct okay it, and the reason we are in favor of it is because it maintains those da daily staffing levels and so we don't see any service impacts to the city with respect to fire protection in ems okay i mean i was s supportive of it back then and i'm still supportive but i'm just surprised that you didn't include some type of numbers to go along with this presentation. So I hope that at some point, refresh my memory or the council's memories just so we understand the budget impact of what you're proposing. Absolutely. Thank you. Alderman Simmons. Thank you. Um, so the 400 residents that are um, being served with the Fire Explorer and the CPR classes, is that's combined? That's combined for all the programs, Alderman. And then the about how many are using our CPR classes, and are we providing them um, for compliance from for some other institutions, or is it mostly folks that are coming for like enrichment, personal enrichment? And have we looked at using um, other organizations, for example, like the Red Cross or some other, to provide that service to the community, or is that responsible to do it that way? Well, I'll get you the exact numbers that break down. There is a balance between just community members wishing to have that training so they can uh, be better prepared for an emergency, whether it be their home or sometimes we'll get babysitters or grandparents that will take the classes, for example. Um, we also do have paraprofessionals that come in and take the classes as well. Uh, one of the advantages of our program, it's one of the most affordable. And of course, our main emphasis in providing the courses is we're just trying to get as many people in the community trained as possible because we know it has a positive impact when it comes to cardiac arrest. Um, Chief Scott, do you have any information? I, I appreciate the information on uh, response time mm -hmm. uh, from the fire station to the emergency. Do you have any information on how long it takes to get from there to a hospital? throughout the city or is that something I can provide that information yes I mean it, it generally is going to be you know we, we tried it we have we're very fortunate we have two level one hospitals within the city so generally when calls are occurring on the north end of the city they're going to be going to Evanston Hospital and the south end they'll go to St. Francis so I can say with a certain degree of confidence right now that those response times are going to be uh, four minutes and less from from the from the incident scene to the hospitals. So you're looking at eight total, and then plus, oh, sorry, plus whatever like has to be done at the scene. It's like four from the station to the scene. Cor oh, I see. You're saying, yes. Like, yes. So, so like, in a general sense, that'd be correct. But uh, incident scene times can vary uh, a great deal based upon what type of incident it is. Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. you bet. The Fire Explorer program. Is that the program where you get an extra point for your application? For it is. There's preference points for the Fire Explorer program, yes. So have we had this program long enough to measure outcomes to see how many folks are going through that program into the career path? Um, it's still a little bit early. I know that we've had a number of Explorer graduates uh, challenge the City of Evanston firefighter exam. We've had uh, a few of those actually placed on the final eligibility list, including our last list, and the preference points definitely help. Um, and again, the most important, or one of the most important things about the Fire Explorer program is it's a way to engage uh, the youth of the community mm -hmm. to kind of have them learn about the vocation of the fire service in EMS. And our Explorer program much better reflects the diversity of Evanston. And so if the more people we can pull from that program, I think better off will be for the long run in terms of increasing the diversity of the department, which as Alderman Braithwaite alluded to, has been a big priority for Chief Kleiber and for myself. That's why we started it. That's why we started the program. All right. Um, Alderman Braithwaite, is that you? No. 
Right. Anything else? Right. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much. Maybe if you could put some numbers like Alderman Braithwaite asked for. All right. I'll get those numbers to you. Thank so you're you looking for the, uh, the potential cost savings of each of these potential options? Correct. You got it. I, um, I mean, I'm not suggesting the, I'm yeah. fine with the community. It was more the holding of the FTE positions. Yeah. I mean, I think you already have those numbers together. Yeah. I okay. remember seeing them. I can tell you it'll be, for the holding of the FTE, it'll be approximately $600,000. That's significant. But some of that will be offset by increased by the, offers. By the increase. Yes, yep, 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 yep. What, okay. One thing, um, I know in past budget discussions with the police department, um, to add one police officer to, uh, to every shift, it requires, I think, hiring on seven people because of vacations, and I, I think it came to seven or six, remember that discussion? Because there are three shifts. So you have to have one right. for each shift, and then there's vacations and sick time. Maybe it was five, but you have to have more than three. In order to add one officer for each shift, you have to have more than three. So I'm wondering how that, how that plays out in the fire department. It plays out where there is, there is a factor that is involved, but it is not as high as seven. But I, that, so, I think I'm exaggerating. I okay. think it was like five or something. Can't so a, a general rule with a 24-48 shift, it, I believe, is 1.5 1 1 for each individual you would like to place on that 24-48 schedule. Yeah. 1.5. Okay. So, any pension move it unless there is a physical body in that position, right? I believe that's correct, sir. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. um, planning and development will start at uh, 25 past 7.